Let's start with a quick poll. Who here is single? That's a shocking amount given that I'm in a room full of really smart and very attractive people. We have all seen rom-coms like Pretty Woman. These movies have one message. The one for you is out there and fate will help you find them. Really? I love love. Love to me is the most powerful drug in the world. Love feels like magic. Love drives some of us a little bit insane. But let's be real. In order to find love, we need to be strategic. And strategy is my thing. I am the definition of a career woman. When I was 12 years old, I started working as a carpenter. I made $12 an hour and I felt tremendous. From there on, I was hooked. I worked my way up in the construction industry, leading multi-million dollar projects, and my life was only about career. Money was freedom. Then, one sunny afternoon, I land in Berlin, excited to get back to work when life decided to throw me a curveball. I had a missed call from my OBGYN, and when I called back, I learned that my pap smear had come back positive. At age 25, I was diagnosed with cervical cancer. When I called the doctor back, she asked me a simple question. Sarah, do you want to have children? If not, they would do a one-time surgery that removes the cancer forever. If yes, they had to do a small surgery with a 20% risk of the cancer coming back. Confronting this, a strong, independent career woman in her mid-20s felt impossible. I fell into a hole of self-reflection. I had money, but I might never have family. Was there more out there in life than just career? The good news is that I hold a PhD in data science and engineering, and therefore I decided to not rely on fate when it comes to figure out that question. So in very much me fashion, I went all in. In that year, I did real life experiments and I ended up going on a hundred dates with a hundred people. Yeah, it was a lot of work. Four years and two serious long and happy relationships later, I have two empirical learnings that I'm gonna share with you today. First, input equals output. Yes, we have all heard this at Stanford Business School, but it's also very much true when it comes to dating. Dating is a part-time job. However, since we're little children, we spend 40 plus hours a week advancing our careers, learning from generations of generations who have done this before and everything in order to make more money. However, enough research shows that if you want to live a long, happy and fulfilled life, it's not really about how much money you make, it's all about relationships. So why do we not focus on what matters most to us? Why do we not learn about it? If I had to rewrite my Stanford essay now about what matters most to me and why, I would probably write about love. And let's be real, I would probably not be here today with you. Second big learning. A long-term partner is way more like a business partner and a best friend than somebody we have a spark with. And don't get me wrong, I love the spark. Spark is great. However, I'm arguing to look behind the spark and figure out if long-term interests and values actually align instead of just relying on an initial chemical connection. When I had my two empirical learnings, given that I'm a scientist, I decided maybe there's real research out there. So I went down a rabbit hole of reading every research paper that has ever been written about dating and love, and I put it all together into something that I call an informal PhD in dating. So I ended up writing a dating book called Start Up Your Love Life, where I apply business knowledge and data analysis on finding a life partner. And yes, you can buy it now on Amazon. I brought some of the most important insights here with me today for you. 
But first, let's take a step back. We were talking about Julia Roberts and Richard Gere. They meet each other randomly and fall deeply in love. What a great story. But how likely is that? The odds of finding love randomly are 1 to 562, 0.17%. It is five times more likely that your next bottle of wine is going to cork. We spend an average about a tenth on the time we spend on choosing the right career, on choosing the right partner. And from going to dates to actually having a baby, it takes an average seven years in the US. So how can we make the odds a little bit more likely and how can we make this whole process a little bit more efficient? we need to use business knowledge. And yes, we're at business school, so let's do that. When you start a new business, the first thing you should think about is do your research and development and decide what market you're going after. In business terms, we call this total addressable market, short TAM. So let's do this for me as a dating product. My TAM is as follows. I'm looking for a man, 50% of the market, age 30 to 37, six feet or taller, only 9% of the market, with a bachelor's degree, and, you know, similarly attractive, and max 50 miles from here. The TAM for me as a dating product is 223 men. That's not big. If I'm willing to go down to 5'11 or taller, my TAM goes up to 450 men. Still not big, but doable. After you do your research and development and decide on your TAM, the next step in every startup process is to decide on your sales strategy. The good thing is when it comes to dating, there's only three big sales strategies that capture 90% of the market. You can date in bars and restaurants, you can date on dating apps, or you can date through friends of friends. And every good investor in the room will have the same question for me right now. Sarah, what's the return of investment of all of that? The return of investment, or also ROI, for these three sales strategies is as follows. If you date in bars and restaurants, the ROI is you need to meet about 90 people to get one actual match. The ROI of dating apps is you need to match with 60 people to get one real potential candidate. And the ROI of dating through friends of friends is about 30 people to one. Yes, you're smart enough. We should all date through friends of friends. After you have figured out your sales strategy, the next step in your startup process is you need to do some piloting and figure out if you have product market fit. And product market fit in dating is really when you found somebody you hopefully like, but also where you don't have any serious deal breakers with. So in order to get there, you need to decide on your deal breakers versus your nice to haves. Write those deal breakers down, screen for them early, and do not compromise because you'll probably get hurt down the road. And yes, I know of some people who keep track of the deal breakers in Excel spreadsheets so they have weekly KPIs. Next step in your dating journey is marketing. And the good news is when it comes to dating, marketing is really all about optimizing your dating profile. And there's a lot of research about this. First, when you take pictures for your dating profile, take them from the left of your face, not from the right. Why? Because throughout our history, we have developed an inherent bias towards seeing beautiful faces from the left and not from the right, thanks to people like Leonardo da Vinci. Second, if you're a guy and you think sunglasses or whatever kind of other glasses will do the trick, get rid of them. You lose 15% of swipes. And yes, if you have a picture of you from that last wedding or whatever other picture with formal wear, put it on your dating profile because you'll score higher on trustworthiness and influence. And yes, you need a picture with a pet, preferably a dog. So go out there, steal your neighbor's dog, take a picture with it and put it on your dating profile because you'll score higher on dateability. And lastly, if you're a man, wear bright colors, and if you're a woman, wear red, and you're gonna crush it. I'm telling you all of this to give you hope, 
there is research out there that we can leverage to make dating more efficient and ultimately more enjoyable. Business is not magic. Business is strategy. Love is not magic either. It's more like a magic trick. So look behind the curtain, figure out what's actually going on, and treat it more like your career than like something that will randomly happen to you. Make magic happen. After having researched dating for several years, I have the toolkit, the scientific formula for love, and the conviction to build a real family while having a career. Luckily, I'm now cancer-free, and I can still have children. Have I found the right partner yet? No, not yet. I might have to rethink some of my deal-breakers and my TAM. But I know that by putting in the work and using strategy, I will find a co-founder for my life so that we can IPO our love. And given last week's KPIs and funnel data, I think I'm slowly getting there. So instead of waiting for Richard Gere to drive by in his limo, go make strategy your co-pilot, get into the driver's seat yourself, and start up your love life. Thank you.